Like so many investors, uh, I suppose, my passion for learning about companies goes back further than I can remember. But it, it wasn't until 2010 that I was lucky enough to cross paths with Charles Montanaro and to join Montanaro Asset Management. In 2012, I became the co-manager on the Montanaro European Smaller Companies Trust and then the lead manager in 2013. So I've been involved with the trust for around about a decade or so now. My role is to work with our large team of experienced analysts to find the highest quality growing European smaller companies and to pick those that have the best valuations for inclusion in the portfolio. Well, I think the first thing to say is perhaps due to all the negative headlines that have come out of Europe over the years, few realise just how good an investment European smaller companies have been. So to demonstrate this, we can use MSCI data. That goes back to 2000. And that shows that if you had put £100 into European smaller companies back then, that £100 would have grown to £800 with dividends reinvested by the end of 2021. The same £100 put into European larger companies would only have been worth around £300. That difference is what people call the small cap effect. That's that over this period, smaller companies have significantly outperformed their larger counterparts. The other thing to say is that European small caps are what we call an inefficient asset class. So if we think about a company like Amazon, for example, that will have more than 50 banks writing research about it. And as an investor, it can be very, very hard to get an edge on a company like that. Conversely, European small caps are under-researched. Some of them have no sell site research at all. Their annual reports might not even be in English. Uh, and frankly, they're too small and illiquid for some of the really large institutions to bother with at all. Now, all of those things mean that for those with the resources to go out and do the work, there's a chance to discover some of these overlooked stocks. And it's that that means that we feel, as active managers, we can add value. Our investment process is split into two stages. In the first stage, we build what we call an approved list. This is a list of the highest quality growing companies in European small cap, and we will not buy a company that isn't on that list. In the second stage, we apply our valuation toolkit to that list to ascertain which of those good companies is also a good investment, and it's from that group that we will select stocks to go into the portfolio. Now, we try not to worry too much about what the peers are doing, but I think there are a few differences in approach. Firstly, we are ruthless when it comes to quality and growth, and we will not buy a company that doesn't have those characteristics, even if it looks cheap. The reason for that is that when something happens like a global pandemic, you don't really want to be caught owning low quality companies that might go bust. And you never know when things like that might, might occur. We take a long term investment horizon and we own our stocks for as long as we possibly can, keeping turnover and transaction costs low. Finally, it's worth highlighting that Montanaro Asset Management is exclusively focused on investing in small and medium-sized listed equities, and we have one of the largest teams out there in that regard. It's a team of 36 people, of whom 15 are on the direct investment analysis side of things. We think that's really important because European small caps are a labour-intensive asset class. There are thousands of companies to choose from, and there's not much research on them. So having a big team to go and visit the companies, to kick the tires ourselves, we think is a real competitive advantage.
Well, a good idea can come from anywhere, but the most common source for us is from our proprietary screens. These use quantitative metrics to rank every company that's listed in Europe by quality. And they help us to remove those companies that won't be suitable for us. That might be companies with stretched balance sheets, poor cash flow generation, or low returns on capital employed, for example. Once we've removed those companies, it's then a case of our analysts, who are all sector experts, reading report after report, uh, trying to find those companies that have the strongest business models and the strongest and most sustainable growth outlooks. We haven't yet found a shortcut to doing all of that reading, and that, of course, is why we think you need a big team to operate in European small caps. From a time horizon perspective, we like to own companies for as long, long as possible, and we have many companies in the portfolio that have been there for five, 10 years or more. When we're looking to make a new investment, we're looking at a five year minimum time horizon. And the reason for that is that we think over a short term time period, a year or two, for example, factors like sentiment, momentum, news flow, are often the dominant drivers of stock returns. But as we extend that time period to longer term, like five years or 10 years, then factors like valuation, the business models and the strength of those business models and the growth of the companies start to matter much more. And it's those things that we spend our time analyzing. Investing in high quality, growing companies is absolutely core to our investment process, and that will never change. We are quality growth investors. Now, there are times, particularly when investors are a little worried, um, so for example, during the Eurozone crisis or indeed the global pandemic, where we see a flight to quality. And that can tend to, to give a tailwind to our style of investing. Conversely, when the outlook for global growth, for example, is a bit better, the opposite can happen, and that can act as a headwind. Now, we think that over the longer term, there's very good evidence to suggest that high quality companies outperform lower quality companies. And so rather than trying to time these shifts in sentiment, we stick to high quality and we ride out any volatility that might come in the short term from these style swings. We also take ESG seriously, and so we have certain exclusions such as oil and gas explorers, uh, tobacco companies and weapons companies. Now it's a really good time to be talking about these factors because after a few years in which high quality growing companies have done quite well, so far in 2022 we've seen a violent rotation away from these types of high quality growing companies that we invest in. This has come about as investors have begun to look at things like inflation and interest rates rising. Now, we're not macroeconomists. We are certainly not going to try and predict what the Federal Reserve will do next or when the next rate hike might be. The way we view things is that as long as we ensure that our companies continue to create value and continue to grow, pullbacks like these should be seen as an opportunity for us to increase our positions and take a long-term investment approach. I do, uh, I own just over 50,000 shares directly and I have further exposure via some of the long-term incentive plans that form a part of my remuneration. Just as importantly, if we look at Montanaro Asset Management's holding and the holdings of all the staff combined, that amounts to around about 6% of the trust's uh, outstanding shares. So as a team, we all have skin in the game. 